Will Kyle Busch stay with Joe Gibbs Racing? Will Ryan Priest get Eric Gamarola's seat? What will Trackhouse do with Project 91? Today, I'm gonna make some bold NASCAR Silly Season predictions. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. The off weekend is behind us. The NASCAR Cup Series returns this Sunday at Nashville Super Speedway. The NBC slash USA Network portion of the broadcast schedule begins. But before cars hit the track this weekend, I want to have a little bit of fun. This is that time of the season when you start to hear some chatter. Who's going to keep their ride for next season? What drivers may jump ship or end up with different teams? NASCAR silly season has begun. There has hasn't really been a major domino to fall just yet, but there are a few right there teetering on that edge. And a lot of them center around Joe Gibbs racing. Today though, I'm not gonna necessarily predict every single silly season move, partially because I don't think there will be a lot of moves. I think Ricky Stenhouse will stay in the 47. I think Eric Jones stays in the 43. He sounds happy with Petty GMS and where they're at. RCR will likely exercise their option and keep Tyler Reddick in house. It would take some real funny business, something really silly to get Reddick away from RCR next season. But there are some silly season situations that we can have some fun with, that we can speculate on. That's what I'm going to attempt to do today. I'm going to make five bold silly season predictions, and I'll tell you which ones I think are the most realistic. Let's start with the Joe Gibbs Racing silly season rumor. I predict that Ty Gibbs will stay in the Xfinity Series for one more season. I don't think this is really a hot take, but anytime I see discussion on social media or in my comment section about, you know, Kyle Busch's contract situation or Martin Truex Jr.'s potential retirement, tons of fans in the comments or in the replies seem 100% convinced that Ty Gibbs is going to get their seat. And I don't think that's going to happen. Joe Gibbs said as recently as a couple months ago that the plan is to keep Ty Gibbs in the Xfinity Series for one more full-time season. Obviously, plans could change, like what if Joe Gibbs Racing loses Truex to retirement and Kyle Busch due to lack of sponsorship? They might need Ty Gibbs to fill one of those seats. But I don't think the situation will get that desperate at Joe Gibbs Racing. Ty Gibbs has obviously been tremendous his first, you know, full-time season in the Xfinity Series last year on a part-time schedule. He won four races, and this year, full-time, he's already got three. He's in a great car. He's shown tons of raw talent, trying to refine that and maybe make a bid for the championship this fall. I do not think there's any realistic chance Ty Gibbs races in the Cup Series next year. I think the only way it's even on the table is if somehow, someway, Gibbs loses both Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr., which I don't think happens. My second bold prediction, and this involves another top Xfinity driver, Noah Gregson will get a full-time NASCAR Cup Series ride for next season. This one's going out on a limb a little bit, but think about it. Noah Gregson, for being a still a young prospect in the Xfinity Series, he's one of the older drivers. He's about to turn 24. He's already in his fourth full-time Xfinity Series season. He's won two races this year. He won three the year before and two the year before that, so he's become a consistent winner in the Xfinity Series, and I think this year is a legit championship threat. He's also made some Cup Series starts this year in the 62 and more importantly in the 16 for Colleague. He's had some rookie moments in those starts like Atlanta when he spun out and crashed by himself early. But recently he's been able to finish some races. He had a top 20 at Talladega, a top 20 at Kansas, finished the race. He's admitted recently that he's looking for a Cup Series ride and said that he hopes Cup teams are looking more at the Xfinity results than many of his Cup results this year driving you know, on a part-time schedule for Colleague. I think Noah Gregson will get a Cup Series ride next season. Will it be with Colleg? I think there's a lot of potential there. Could it be with a, a completely different team like an SHR or I'm thinking of Chevy teams, but you know, SHR could be on the table that 10 cars of course available and they're gonna look for a driver who brings some sponsorship and that might fit Noah Gregson. Is Gregson fully Cup Series ready? I don't know. I do feel like wherever he goes, he'll probably struggle a bit out the gate, but he spent plenty of time in the Xfinity Series at this point. And I can't be the only one who remembers those loose rumors a couple years ago about him replacing Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Remember that? When it was like a rumor for a week? <laughs> Next, my third bold prediction, Ryan Priest does not drive for Stuart Haas Racing next year. Kind of like the Ty Gibbs one, everyone kind of just assumes that 10 car that Eric Amarola is vacating is basically reserved for Ryan Priest, who was signed this past offseason as a reserve driver, development driver for Stuart Haas. That makes some sense, but you know, at the time, I said they were bringing Ryan Priest in 
really to replace Kevin Harvick after he likely steps away at the end of next season. Let's be honest, the reason Almirola got that 10 car in the first place is because he brought Smithfield with him, a huge sponsor who funded, you know, 25, 30, 35 races a season. When Almirola retires at the end of the season, I think there's a great chance Smithfield backs out as well, or at least significantly decreases the number of primary sponsorship they're willing to fund. Which means whoever gets that 10 car will likely need to bring at least some funding with them. And, you know, we've seen Hunt Brothers Pizza on Ryan Priest's car and truck in recent years, but I doubt they're going to step up and sponsor, you know, 20 races next year. So Ryan Priest may not have the sponsorship in the short term to get that 10 car next year. That's my prediction. I think they'll hold on to Priest until Kevin Harvick likely retires at the end of 2023, and he he can move into that four car, which may still have Bush Beer sponsorship, Mobile One sponsorship, and the rest. That's my prediction for Ryan Priest. I don't know who gets that 10 car. There have been some rumblings that John Hunter Nemechek maybe is interested. I think SHR will look at a lot of great young drivers who are potentially available, like Eric Jones is not yet under contract with Richard Petty. He's impressed this year. We know all about Zane Smith, who's tearing it up in the trucks this season. Heck, maybe Noah Gregson. It would be risky for SHR to go with another young, inexperienced driver, but they may not have a lot of other great choices at this point. They're going to need someone who brings some funding with them. I don't think that's Ryan Priest next year. I've got two more predictions. I'll save the bigger one for last, but my fourth bold prediction is that Kyle Busch only gets a one-year extension with Joe Gibbs Racing. And we're right back in this same situation pretty much a year from now. Mars M&Ms is stepping away after this season, which means if Kyle Busch is going to keep that 18 ride, they need to find a major multi-million dollar sponsor to step up. It's June, late June now, and they haven't found one. You know, there was a report a month or two ago from Bob Pockris that they were close to striking a deal with a major technology company. That could still be in the works, but it's been months now. We haven't heard anything. I do think they'll find a sponsor for Kyle Busch, but I'm not convinced they'll find a sponsor willing to invest, you know, three, four, five years down the line. They may find a one-year deal, and that will allow Gibbs and Kyle Busch to prolong these negotiations for another season, give them more time to potentially find a replacement for M&Ms, a true replacement. I think about a couple of years ago when Brad Keselowski wanted a multi-year extension from Penske, they couldn't find the funds to make it happen, so he ended up with a one-year deal. I think something similar may happen to Kyle Busch here. Maybe Kyle Busch doesn't take that offer. Maybe Joe Gibbs Racing does find a way to, to extend him long term. You know, the one difference between Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski is that Kyle Busch also owns a truck series team that's affiliated with Toyota. Like Toyota's very much invested in Kyle Busch. At the time, Penske and Ford were a little less invested in Brad Keselowski, at least by comparison. Like his truck team was already closed at that point. So maybe Toyota is able to move some things around and ink Kyle Busch to a multi-year extension. But my bold prediction right now, considering how hush-hush, how quiet those talks have been, I'm saying he gets a one-year deal. And we'll see what happens for 2024. All right, my fifth and final bold NASCAR silly season prediction. I think Jimmy Johnson will return to NASCAR with Trackhouse Racing. Specifically that Project 91 car. No, I don't think Jimmy's coming back full time, but I think he'll run a race next year. I'll honestly be surprised if he doesn't. Just last month during the Indy 500, he expressed interest in running the Indy 500 Coke 600 double. Obviously schedules are tight. Not sure how easy that is to do these days, how possible it is, but if anyone can make it work or make it happen, I think it's Jimmy Johnson. Meanwhile, recently Trackhouse announced a third part-time car that will debut later this summer at Watkins Glen with Kimi Raikkonen behind the wheel. The idea behind this third car is to bring in world-class drivers from all sorts of racing disciplines and, and give them a, sh a shot at NASCAR. It sounds like they're focused more on international drivers. Jimmy Johnson is as American as it gets. But if they can put a deal together, I don't think Trackhouse would be opposed to running Jimmy Johnson maybe at Daytona, maybe a road course somewhere, maybe the Coca-Cola 600. I don't think Trackhouse would be opposed to, to making that happen. It just comes down to if Jimmy Johnson wants to do it and is able to fit it into his both racing and personal schedule. I only want to see Jimmy Johnson come back if one, he's in a competitive car, which I think Trackhouse, it would probably be competitive. But two, if it really means something. I don't want to see Jimmy Johnson come back and run 25th at, at Kansas or Martinsville. I want it to be a part of something bigger. You know, if he comes back and runs the Daytona 500, you know, that's a huge race. Okay, do that. But if he comes back and runs the Coke 600 as part of the double, as a racing fan more broadly, that would be a tremendous story to follow. I know it was really fun to follow Kurt Busch when he did it recently in 2014 and did well in the Indy 500, didn't finish the NASCAR race. A driver of Jimmy Johnson's caliber, 
running the double would get national headlines and would certainly pique my interest. Even if he runs 25th in the Coke 600, I'd still love to see him give it a shot. So that's my prediction that Jimmy Johnson does come back and run a NASCAR race next year, probably with Trackhouse. Where, when, not sure, but I'd love to see him try the double. And he's opened that door in recent weeks. Share your thoughts down below. You know, all those predictions I think have a real shot at happening. I don't think they're all necessarily the most likely outcome, but I think they're all very realistic. I wanna know what you guys think. What do you think of my bold predictions? Do you have any bold silly season related predictions of your own? Share them down in the comment section below. Maybe there's a big one that I missed that just flew right over my head. Share your thoughts down below. That is gonna do it for another episode of Out of the Groove. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR every single day here on this channel. We rarely miss a beat and as always, a Big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I'll be at Nashville this weekend for the Ally 400. It wouldn't be possible for me to travel to races like that without your very generous support, so I really appreciate it. I'll be traveling the next few days. I know I just said we talk NASCAR every day, but there may be a day or two here where I don't have a video up because I will be traveling, but I'll see you out at Nashville. If you're at the track and you see me, be sure to come say hi. That's gonna do it. I'll see you again very, very soon. Keep your eyes on uh, your subscription boxes. <laughs>